Well, hey guys, it's Joel and welcome back to beautiful Germany here just outside of the Nürburgring where yesterday I completed two incredible laps in this Maserati Quatsch Porte. If you haven't seen those and you love the Nürburgring, then I encourage you to click in the top right hand side of the screen now as that was one of the best driving experiences I've ever had. But today we are in hot pursuit of a second incredible driving experience as we're going to indulge in another amazing thing that Germany has to offer in its de-restricted autobahns. Incredibly in 2024, there are still places where you can legally drive at whatever speed you want to and Germany offers some of the best opportunities to do that. I have done this a few times before, actually quite a few times before, probably more to list. The first time was in my BMW Z4, but I've come back here in a couple of Audi R8s, uh, an Audi SQ8 and a few other cars, my 7 Series, of which we've maxed out all of them. But this one is a little bit more curious to me. This is a slightly older car, it's 17 years old, 400 horsepower, and on paper should be capable of 171-ish miles per hour. But I've read that some of these were electronically limited from the factory to 155, and so today I want to find out if that's the case, and if it's not the case, will it still go to the factory claim speed or perhaps even above? Now, when partaking in this sort of driving behavior, of course, there are risks involved. Going at high speed in any case is going to be more risky than not, but there are things we can do to mitigate that risk and to ensure everything is as safe as possible. Now, what's quite handy is that we did sort of have a little bit of a test day with this Maserati yesterday on the Nordschleife. I got to understand that the tires are good, the brakes are good, and the handling all seems fine at higher speeds. I did also go up to about 130 odd miles an hour yesterday on the way here on the de-restricted autobahn and everything seemed okay. So with that, I am happy to push on and have a crack at a top speed attempt today in this car. But firstly, I want to just put a bit of pressure into the tires as I took some out before the track driving yesterday, make sure they're all level. And also I'll just have a once over of the car to make sure nothing's flapping about or hanging off that shouldn't be and generally checking all of these things before any sort of undertaking with a car or even just regularly every month or so is good practice. But you know what else is also good practice, which is probably something I need to learn to do a little bit better. It's checking before you buy as well. So car dealers being a little bit dishonest, potentially slightly scammy and dubious is nothing new. However, these days, at least we have the ability to do more due diligence. The car you see on an advert may look perfect, but it's what you don't see that could end up costing you thousands. And that's where today's video sponsor, Motorscan, will come in handy. For example, this is a picture of a Golf that is for sale. And as you can see from the exterior and interior pictures, it looks great. However, what Motorscan can tell me is that it was involved in an accident and it caused, as you can see, major structural damage and a full airbag deployment. Now, this accident was never declared to the insurer, nor was it officially written off. And as we can see here with Motorscan, these are the pictures of the same car that's for sale in a not so good state. So if you were to go ahead and buy this car based on the merit of the dealer or the lovely photos, without doing a further check yourself, you would have been none the wiser of what you were buying. Most major car history sites don't record this type of information, but as Motorscan has the ability to sift through car salvage sites, it can give you that extra information that you really do need, such as unofficial write-offs, whether the car's been used as a taxi, a police car, if it's had mileage rollbacks, if it's ever been stolen, and much more. So don't just be fooled by those lovely photos, the shiny exterior. Get a motor scan check to make sure you know exactly what you're buying. And you can get 10% off using the code ITSJOEL at checkout via the link in the description or on screen now. Thank you Motorscan for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get on to our autobahn runs. So I need to get the car switched on so that I can plug in my tire inflator to the cigarette port and check all the pressures. But I don't think I've actually ever been able to record a cold start with this Quicksilver exhaust on a video for you guys. So I'm gonna do that now. Um, if you've got headphones on, just maybe turn it down a notch. of that then. I just had a quick look under the bonnet to check everything in there. The fluids are all good, which is great after our drive yesterday. So the car's telling me that all the pressures are 31, which I lowered them slightly for the track yesterday. But interestingly, the handbook in this car says that the front tire should be 32 and the rear is 29. I'm used to cars being the other way around. Because we're going to be going high speed, I'll probably add a PSI to each. So I'm going to be going for 33 front, 
30 rear and we'll see how that how that goes and i should mention at this point that it's not just the pressures that are important when it comes to tires but it's the actual tires themselves and i want to give a special shout to michelin for sending me these pilot sport 4s tires i reached out to them and let them know about the projects i was undertaking with this maserati and they kindly obliged to send me a set of these wonderful tires which i had fitted just before the trip there is literally only one contact point between your car and the road and that is the tires and so it's absolutely vital that they're good ones these michelin Pilot Sport Forest has performed excellently with the efficiency test with our trip to the Nürburgring and then fantastically on track as well, which is exactly why I wanted them. The other good thing about the Michelin Pilot Sport range is that they also perform tremendously well in wet weather conditions. And that's clearly what we've got today. And with that, let's hit the road and get to the de-restricted autobahn. <laughs> So we're just approaching a stretch of autobahn, which I like to use. Uh, but as you can see, the weather is absolutely abominable. In fact, it's only got worse since we were outside the car, checking the tires and all that sort of stuff. This is the same stretch of autobahn that actually I did a top speed run in an Audi R8 in a few years back. That was exhilarating and we did 206 miles an hour indicated in that car certainly don't expect to be doing those sorts of speeds today and quite frankly i wouldn't want to either but this is de-restricted now so it is clear ahead i will just take it nice and easy we'll build it up nice and slowly this third gear which we know goes all the way up to 110 which is incredible 90 miles an hour wind noise you can hear is annoyingly because this window doesn't quite close properly so uh, there's a lot more buffeting or wind noise than you might expect other than that noise this car rides incredibly well at 100 miles an hour we have great conditions in terms of traffic or lack thereof there's not much traffic at all but the rain is awful just stay in fourth gear for now, just have a little look at the road ahead. We have got a car. Hundred twenty-five and a bit of standing water, so I'm gonna let off there. We'll pass this Citroen or what is it, an Audi? Gosh, they all look the same these days. Let's have a little squirt down the hill, see what we can do. miles per hour there that's as fast as I've gone in this car so far so 135 miles per hour there I'm not sure exactly what that was in kilometers uh, but that felt pretty pretty good at that speed this buffeting coming out this window is very annoying that's the main thing putting me off going much faster because it's so noisy and obviously sounds like something's not right but it's fine it's just a slightly open window back we go once again weather's not improving so I think after this run we'll see what we can do but I don't dare go much faster in these conditions so let's go all the power now 70 miles an hour or so at the top of second as we know very high top speed in third 110 pushing now in fourth I really wanted to see what this car would do. I suppose we are seeing what it can do, but there comes a point where it would be reckless to do any more. I can tell you though, <laughs> of our 10 kilometer, six minute autobahn run so far, autobahn, we've averaged 10.4 miles per gallon. <laughs> so I'm going to do one more going back the other way because in terms of wind and buffeting and all that sort of fun stuff it felt better going back that way so we'll try one more that way see if we can better the 135 safely and then we might have to call it a day 
at least until this improves, but it might not. We'll pop the car into sport mode, which slightly firms everything up and see if that helps at all. Not sure that it will. Do a quick check of the brakes here on this exit, press them quite hard. They're all still working nicely, great pressure. The key with these sorts of things is to have fun, but I think it's really good to know when you've had your fun as well, because I think things can, well, they will obviously go wrong for, you know, they do go wrong, um, but you're only increasing that if you just push past the point where you really know it's probably time to call it a day. So this will be it, certainly on this road in these conditions for me in this car right now but we'll give it our best shot the grip this has on these missions though if i just you know we throw it here at 45 miles an hour unrelenting so after third gear after about 110 115 start to feel the limits of this car's power, it stops accelerating so brutally. We'll just past this lorry, 130 miles an hour indicated there, back into fourth gear. I'm going to stay in this lane, as is the lane I used earlier, 135, 140 miles an hour, 145. And honestly, I don't want to push it any harder than that. 145 or so miles an hour there. I think that might be the best we're gonna get right now. And you can really literally see the needle, <laughs> the fuel needle moving back as you hold it on the throttle. What an experience. Brakes feeling good. Engine temperature is perfect. In sport mode on that run there, it did feel uh, a lot steadier actually. So I, I don't know if that's just because the wind conditions changed or the road condition was slightly different. Tires were a bit hotter, don't know. But for whatever reason in sport, it did feel uh, a lot happier at higher speeds. It was easier to push up. So 145 or so miles an hour. I'm gonna pop into a little town called Dawn now and uh, have a breather and then we'll review to see if we might get to have another go. Barely breaking traction there, flooring it out of a junction in sopping wet conditions. Up to 100 miles an hour, this Quattroporte feels quick and actually before I bought it I thought it would feel slower than it does because on paper yeah just under 400 horsepower but it's 400 horsepower and something that's almost two tons around a five and a bit second 0 to 60 time and a claim top speed around 170 miles an hour depending on who you ask not dissimilar stats to my former BMW 760 Li but this feels quicker I think it's it's sharper it's more responsive obviously you can feel that it's designed to be more free revving, more spiky, and it certainly feels as such. The standout for me though with this car has got to be the handling. I raved about it in my Nürburgring video, I've raved about it in other content before now. The Pilot Sport tyres have only accentuated that and brought it to the fore because it just darts, turns and points where it doesn't have any right to, to be honest. When you look at the car, it's a long car, over five metres, yet you can treat it like it's almost half that. It really is very impressive. I should give a shout to the ZF six-speed gearbox as well because as you can hear, the shifts are really good. Now, interestingly, like Ferrari, certainly like the Ferrari 430 Scuderia that I drove, if you sort of shift on half power, say 5,000 RPM, it's relatively slow. However, if I do that again, back into second, and I floor it up to 5,000 RPM, hold the throttle all the way down, it will shift faster, like so. So it is really satisfying, really rewarding to absolutely floor it and pull the paddles. And in the downshifts, really nice and quick. So no complaints at all. And then the thing is, when you want to put it in auto and just cruise along, it does all that 
very well like really any other torque converter or ZF car. It's very quick, very smooth and yeah, just a, a lovely thing to drive. So I've come to a little town called Dawn to have a quick coffee and a sandwich. Sat here for a little while and the weather is unchanged. I just actually pulled up this weather radar I have here on AccuWeather and you can see there's just more of it coming up from Luxembourg. In fact, it's meant to intensify later on this afternoon. And I've got a Euro tunnel to go and get. So I think, unfortunately, uh, I'm gonna call it a day, but I just, I'm gonna say it one more time. I have been mightily impressed with this Maserati, considering where we were a few months ago when I bought it with the engine variator issue, which by the way, hasn't been fixed. Still in the process of trying to look at if that's possible. Despite that, the car, the engine, everything has performed perfectly. I've done, I will have done by the end of the day and hopefully no issues will arise. Over a thousand miles in two days in this car. I've done, oh, I will have done about two and a half thousand total by the time I get home this evening. And I've not had a single issue. Yes, I've had a couple of times I've switched it on. There's been some warning lights, some issues with electronics and stuff, but nothing that you can't switch it off, switch it on again, and it's fine. And in general, the car's exceeded my expectations in more or less every single way. It's faster than I thought it'd be. The gearbox is much better than I thought it'd be. It's actually more comfortable than I'd even expected. It's certainly way more efficient than I had anticipated. And ultimately, if you told me that I had to come back next week, do exactly the same thing again, go on the Nürburgring, do some top speed runs and then drive home, I wouldn't even hesitate. I know that the car would be capable and it would do it. So if you need any sort of sign to just say that that car you've always wanted to buy, should you just go and do it and just take the risk? Honestly, just do it. Life is way too short. But what I have got is lifelong memories now and I can say that I've owned a Maserati, which is invaluable. So that's my advice to you if you're still watching this video is to just go and do it so i will end it there thank you ever so much for watching the channel as usual if you are enjoying the content with this maserati do let me know in the comments below it really helps thank you so much to motorscan for sponsoring this video and i hope to see you in the next one very very soon